So it's always great to welcome in our beacon of truth, the stud muffin <laughs> and a half, the man nobody gives a fuck where he's from, Drew Ramenda. <laughs> so, hey, you guys got a Saskatoon guy now, Peterson. Oh, f- uh, yeah, and you know what? Yeah, uh, uh, Doug. Well, you know, Doug Wilson was actually on a call earlier this week. Said that they'd been keeping their eye on him for a little while. Yeah, so. good kid. Good, uh, obviously good because from Saskatoon. Played in the Blazers, midget. Well, I can't say midget triple A. It's under 18 now. You see, they used to be midget league, but not anymore. It's under 18, triple A. Um, centerman, right handed shot. Oh. Yeah. So obviously the team is better right away because you got a kid from Saskatoon. See, this is all I'm saying. That's, all you, that's all you got. Hey, St. Louis won the championship. Three Saskatchewan guys. Okay. <laughs> Tampa, last two years, Braden Point. Well, not really a Saskatchewan guy, but he plays Saskatchewan, so I'm going to give him. I'm going to give him that one. But Luke Shen. Oh yeah. <laughs> we we are here to lead everybody out of the wilderness. Hey Jay. Well, speaking of that, then were you uh, at all worried that you were just going to completely overshadow Brody and Curtis during your pre and post game appearances? Well, I did. It was obvious. Yeah. You know, worried wasn't. It was. It was wanting to or knowing that I will and looking forward to it was probably. <laughs> More than anything. It was inevitability. I tell you what. um, That was like nine games. And if I never broadcast another hockey game again, I'll be happy. Because, listen, as we know, my six years in six seasons in Edmonton felt like 12, both to me and the Edmonton Oilers fans. Um, We're not my, we're not banner years for me. (laughs) Um, and neither for sports than I imagine as, as well. Um, so I got more, um, satisfaction and production help and got to work with more with people who liked what I did and how I did it in the nine games back with San Jose and the NBC, um, California than I did in six seasons in, in my other job. Oh, with, my, with that other company and, and it's just that's just the way I'm, I'm not slamming sportsnet or anybody else that's just the way it was you know but uh, like i said if i never did another hockey game i would be happy because i got to come back to the team i love and i got to broadcast to the fans that i have nothing but my heart for them i mean they're so wonderful and they always have been to me don't know why and i can walk away now and go okay, I got to go out this time on my terms. And that's, it was so much fun to do. The, the, the Sharks were great. You know, Jonathan Beckler, thank you very much. Scott Emmerich, you know, for opening the door for me. And there's so many, Sean Madison and, and all those guys. I mean, they're just so wonderful. But I'll tell you what, you know me, I watch a lot of hockey. And, and of course, here we go in my, my soliloquy, five minute answers, I apologize. <laughs> um, I watch a ton of hockey. I watch everybody. I got center ice. I've got it everywhere. And, you know, I'm watching it. And I pay a special attention to the broadcasts. The San Jose Sharks broadcasts are top notch. They, Randy's one of the best in the world at what he does. Brett doesn't miss a thing. He's, he's become such a very, such a great broadcaster. Brody and Curtis are fun and they've got a nice little relationship going. And I got to interfere on that a little bit, but you know, who's a rising star? Scotty Hannon. Oh, absolutely. And Scotty Hannon. That was the thing when we saw that um, that Curtis picked up kind of a, a coaching gig there. Yeah. Uh, it was kind of like, well, maybe he's going to miss a couple more games. This gives uh, Hanner an opportunity to jump big. I think he's done really well. Really well. He's very, very good. And um, I'm, I'm actually, I don't like him very much um, because um, he he was wearing the three piece suits all the time when we were on together. <laughs> and kind of pissed me off that he was really kind of showing you up coming in bit. with coming in with the elbows up you know what i mean <laughs> so, no, but he's, he's, a, he's a wonderful guy really smart sees the game well like that's a top-notch broadcast so i was honestly i was honored to come back and i was happy and it made my made my last you know year and a half because of being able to just do that so i what? hope everybody enjoyed it well, uh, oh absolutely are there, are there plans to try that again this coming season at all well, for me, yeah. I'm not sure for them, though. 
I don't, we've, I don't know. We'll, we'll see, you know, um, you know, money's an issue and I, and there's no Applebee's up here and that's how they keep paying me is Applebee's <laughs> gift cards. Not, not, I'm not I'm cases kidding. of Pepsi. Oh, they could do that too, but I think it's tough getting them over the border. Um, <laughs> so no, I, we've, we've talked and hopefully we'll talk a little bit more in the future, but I, like I said, it was, it was so satisfying. And once again, to get back and really love what I was doing and who I was doing it with. So you know, hopefully I get to do it more. Well, I will. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, but as far as outshining Brody and, and Curtis, hey, come on. <laughs> you know, that's why, but that's why I started to grow this because I'm trying to fit in with those guys and you know see if I can you know growing hair is not my strong suit so this has only taken me about 20 months to do so we'll you know who knows by by October when I'll well, look like. yeah I was gonna say Brody <laughs> seems to have that three-day growth thing constant all like the that. time <laughs> <laughs> but it's funny you bring up Brett because he's had a couple uh you know I look you guys broadcast game after game. I mean, literally hundreds of games. You're yeah. going to make a faux pas here and there. And they're just, they are kind of fun. To, in fact, yeah. I don't i don't know if you, uh, like a couple this past year, uh, Randy, I don't know what happened, but they were thrown to commercial. They were going to intermission. And he's like, you know, coming up, we, we you know, it'll be Crody and Brood, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, and he's like, whoever those guys are. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You just got to roll with it, man, because you make you make mistakes all the time. You just, you laugh it off and go. Like, honestly, it's just TV and just sports. Yeah. So. Oh, and we all had fun with it on social media the, as yeah. the game progressed. It's like, okay, <laughs> who are we going to in the second intermission? But yeah, my my favorite is the broadcaster jinx part. The broadcaster jinx is my favorite. Randy used to be the king of it, like the king of it. He would say, when we were broadcasting together, Sharks power play is uh, is 12 for their last 12, and then they go for nothing. Or their penalty kill is 14 in a row goal. Yeah. And it, it's it's real. It happens all the time. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman with the, with the field goal last year, the guys, the guys hit 44 in a row. <laughs> Why? And this year in the playoffs, Pierre Maguire – Joe Micheletti, Johnny Forslund doing the Montreal Vegas series. And it's game three. And Montreal is, is, uh, is behind. And Mark andre Fleury comes out to play the puck, remember? Oh, God, I Gives it up. Pulls an, old, pulls an archer's herbe, right? So just before that, just as soon as Shea Weber gets the puck behind his own net and starts moving it, Pierre says, because you know, one thing tonight, guys, is that Mark Andre Fleury's puck handling? He is just not given <laughs> anything to the Montreal Canadiens. Joe McLeary says, "Well, you're absolutely right. He's just not giving them any chance." <laughs> oh, scores! <laughs> like, yes, broadcaster curse. Yes, <laughs> still alive and well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, what did you think about the uh, the draft this season? Well, it's interesting. You know, with the draft, it's a tough draft for scouts because they didn't see many guys play. Yeah, you particularly know, the O, right? The O was right. off. O, o was off. The WHL played 24 games in a bubble in Regina. Uh, City Rams of fun. Um, the uh, Quebec played small amounts, but it's it was tough for them. Some colleges were going, and, you know, yeah. but it's, it was very tough to do. So you really relied on your coaching staff to go back in the past and try to find and access as much as you could. But, you know, who knows how the draft goes? The draft is always – Crap shoot. Let's see. You know, like Dean Lombardi used to say, you know, when you look at a draft, go back and look at a draft. He always used to, he, he would bring the guys in, into, I don't know if he did it in San Jose. I know he did it in LA where he'd bring his scouts back two or three years later. Uh, and they'd go, they'd go back into draft and say, okay. And, and they'd say, this is where we, these guys were drafted. Now, this is where they are. What did we miss? How yep. did we miss that? Just to be, you know, sharp. I'm sure that Timmy Burke and Dougie do that too. I mean, there's a lot of work that goes into the drafting besides, you know, picking up the old, Oh, this is what central scouting says. Yeah. Let's take that guy. Yeah. But well, you know, I, I don't know what, you know, we'll see what I think of the draft in five years. <laughs> exactly. But I, I, you know, it seems like Wilson, uh, you know, senior is pretty happy. You know, it was all what nine forwards last season. Then this year, yeah. you know, a little bit of uh, everything, but obviously getting Eklund is, is you know, huge. 
super duper high on that. And I was wondering, and I wanted to ask you, it seems that once Doug Wilson Jr. has was kind of like given the lead role and yeah. Tim, Tim kind of stepped back a little bit, it seems like the Sharks have kind of gotten away from like the safe pick and they're moving to kind of a little more high risk, high reward. And, you know, just rather than drafting for what you need right now or whatever, it, they're just, it's best guy available. They just seem a little more focused. Well, I, I don't know, like, you know, because when you're a coach or a broadcaster, you're, you're so far removed from where you, I, you know, I went to three drafts as a coach with the Sharks. And honestly, by the second round, I was going to go get a Pepsi outside, you know, it, it, you don't, you coaches, you're not involved. You just sit there and you look, you know, Hey, there's coach so-and-so. They didn't say anything <laughs> about the assistant coaches, of course, but um, I always looked at, you know, what Timmy's drafts and Timmy's drafts were obviously you look at the players that came in and there were some jewels uncovered boy. There were some terrific players. And, you know, Scott Hannon's one of them. You look at Joe Pavelski, you look at oh. Logan Couture, you can go on and on and on. Tomas Hurdle, who I, misjudged from day one not day, I shouldn't say day one but um I, I didn't think he was going to be as good and as hard-nosed of a professional as he is um so I think Timmy you know Timmy did he, he's he was drafting for a different team mm. you know that was a team that was it had veterans it had it had guys who and this was a team that was a perennial playoff team and, and what we thought was a contender all the time so you could make those I don't know if you know safe pick, I guess, if you want to put it in your words, but I think now um, with what they're doing, they're building a, di they're trying to build a different team or Doug says it's a reset and, and, and trying to make sure you, you uh, restock the shelves, so to speak. So I think it's just a different um, team that you're drafting for. Gotcha. I don't know if that makes any sense or not. No, absolutely. And then as you mentioned, perennial playoff team. So they're, you know, they're, they're picking towards the lower end of the bowl yeah. every, you know, every round. So you have that to deal with, but no, I mean, full marks for mining for gold with, like you said, like guys like Pavelski, uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Kevin LeBanc, yeah. you know, those I mean, th if you're going to be a good team, like Kenny Holland did it in Detroit for all those years and, and the Sharks have had to now start doing it. You draft. And then you develop. That's why your AHL team is so important. You know, Kenny Holland used to talk about not picking them off the vine until they're ripe. And that's what Doug is. That's what Doug and, and Tim and Doug Jr. are doing now. And Joe will is that you can't pick them off until they're ripe. So that's why your AHL team is so important. If you look at the Tampa Bay lightning, the Tampa Bay lightnings core guys, their top scorers, their top performers, are all Tampa Bay Lightning draft picks. And they were developed in-house from Hedman to Stamkos to Point to on and on to Vasilevsky to on and on and on you get. They were all developed in-house. You need, if you're going to win championships, and it's been proven, I was, it's funny, I was doing, a, I was looking at it last night, just going over teams that have been big in free agency and how successful they were. And it really doesn't, just the, the amount of money you spend and the amount of free agency you acquire doesn't necessarily, in fact, it, history has shown us, it doesn't guarantee that you're going to be raising the Stanley Cup. Um, there's a couple of anomalies. Brett Hall going to Dallas in 97. Um, Post Foot and Foot and <laughs> I know what? I'm glad that happened, though, because of the dumbest goddamn rule there was out there. <laughs> um, and also then Brett Hall and Luke Robitaille going to Detroit. And I think there's a host of one in there, too. But not a lot of not a lot of. Uh, teams that have won the cup since 07 have been heavy in the free agent market develop draft well develop well and make smart trades and have a little bit of luck well and over the course of that time you've got oh god i ran the numbers not too long ago but if you looked i think it was like since the lockout or so you have essentially like six teams that have won half the cups over the like the last 18 years you know you're chicago yeah. tampa pittsburgh yeah. la so you know exactly Yay for parody, I guess. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> well, we see who the what the Sharks have done so far. Clearly addressing the goaltending situation. Had to. <laughs> yeah. So Kozanosh goes down to Arizona, get back Aiden Hill. You see uh, Martin Jones gets bought out, picked up very quickly 
by Philly gets to uh, hang out with Justin Braun over there. Yeah. But uh, they bring back Optimus Prime. Uh, you know, <laughs> we get the rhyme, the rhyme man, but you see Rudy Balsers signs for two years. Uh, jury's still out on Noah Gregor. I'm waiting for an offer or I like, I like Noah Gregor. As do I. I like him a lot. You know, I'm maybe a little biased, but I, I like him. I like his speed. I like his tenaciousness. I like how he, he, he goes. I like the kid gives you a lot of max effort. So, but anyway, keep going. Well, I was going to say, and I, I think he could really force the issue with Gambrell at that fourth line. So center, you know, yeah. um, but you see uh, Aiden Hill. Uh, oh, of course, Nick Bonino to kind of shore up. The, position. Yeah. For that third line, make that more defensively responsible. And then, of course, uh, Cogliano, who evidently, based on the uh, call that we had with Cogliano earlier this week, got uh, evidently the move was signed off on by Pavelski. Yeah, yeah, they played <laughs> together in, in Dallas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, how are you feeling about this team after missing the, seeing them miss the playoffs for the last two seasons? When I look at when I, about a GM, did he have a good day on free agency day? And all I do is look the next day and say, is your team better than it was? 24 hours ago and the team is better than it was 24 hours ago first of all in Benino and Cogliano and Reimer you're bringing in three experienced guys veteran guys you cannot undervalue how important that is you need the experience yeah you've got to build and develop but you need experience especially your team that's going to be a team that's going to be fighting for a playoff spot where it's not going to all go well you need those guys. And those three guys, from what I know, and just, just from, you know, going in the rooms and things like that, talking to other players about this guy or that guy, the, the reports or the, the praises that come back on those three guys are nonstop. Yeah. Um, Wilson, Wilson mentioned over and over just consummate professionals. Yeah. And that's what you, that's what you need. And you, you wonder, you know, what, is a, what does that mean when you're professional? It's just a guy that every day, is preparing for that game. Every guy that is totally is about the craft, making himself better. Pavelski, Thornton, Couture, Boyle, Burns, those, those guys, you can go on and on and look at the guys that, you know, Vinny Damfus, Gary Suter, Tony Granato, those guys as well. They're every day showing by their actions, not by their words, that they are in the moment, in all in for the team. Their life is consumed by this game and for this team. Um, the other thing they do, I, th I think from just a practical point of view, is the problem they had last year is obviously, as you, you said, shore up that third line defensively. Too many times Logan's line was going out there to play against the other team's top line. And the minutes were heavily distributed where Logan was in his line were defending all the time. And then you've got zero juice to try to be able to go score, just to, exactly. to flip the table and or flip the switch and go into the offensive zone and get something going. It, you can do it, but boy, oh boy, it, it was tough. And at least what it does for Bob Bugner, he's able to distribute some minutes down that third line and fourth line with some confidence now. And, and you've got Cogliano, Benino, um, and then your top six guys, and I would even I would even look at there's you know there's ballers too, and there's some other guys that I look at and go. The one term that coaches use are two of them: trust or reliable. You know, those are the two. If if I'm a coach, and I trust that guy when I throw him out there, that's that's a weight of the world off my shoulders. So I don't know how many times Bob Boudner can honestly say last year when he threw some guys out there that he was trusting what was going to happen. They'll work. They'll stick to the process. They'll do what you want because they are, they are professional hockey players. They'll work their asses off for you. But sometimes they just weren't able to man up on the other guy across from you. And I think that gives what Doug has done is given Bob Bugner a couple, a couple of tools to be able to do, distribute some minutes more evenly, which should benefit the top two forwards or top two centers, I should say. Yeah, well, I see we were talking about this earlier where it just I feel like the team is better than it was a few days ago, but I still think there's a lot of question marks. It's sure is, you know, can can Timo Meyer bounce back, you know, from, from before signing that fat contract? Uh, 
Mm-hmm. Hard to be hungry when you're full, AJ. Hard right. to be hungry when you're full. Uh, can Barabanov, you know, continue what he started with, with that brief yeah. glimpse that here, but it was like, what, seven points in nine games or something? I mean, yeah. kid, kid was remarkable. For, and granted, older freshman, if you will. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> he he is, to me, a little bit of a question mark. I want to see if he can do that over 82, not just that we've seen guys who come in and, you know, can shine. Uh, Lukash Radil comes to mind. Yeah, you know, Radil. all the time, right? came in had it was just like where's this guy been and then yeah. where'd that guy go yeah yeah and then of course the blue line you know i mean horrific goaltending numbers but some of that goes on the defense you know well, of course you're, gonna, it does. you're gonna lead the team in high danger or lead the league in high danger chances i mean you know patrick Wall yeah. isn't gonna stop all of that on his best day so playing better you know seeing some better de- team defense from the forwards but also the most expensive defense in the league these guys need to, you know. Well, you have to. Here, here's the thing. I was talking with a with an AHL coach about, you know, the key. What you're trying to do as a as an AHL coach, what you're trying to do. He goes, I'm trying to get guys who can play above their cap number, <laughs> which is which is a great way to put it, right? Absolutely. And he said, and if you're a pro scout, you're kind of doing the same thing. You're trying to get guys, find guys that play a, a, above their cap number, like. Ryan Graves would have been a perfect example in Colorado of a guy who played above his cap number. Now, when you've got uh, Mark Edward Vlasic, Brent Burns, and Eric Carlson, I need them to play to their cap number at least. Minimum, right? Yeah. They have to. Because as a general manager, if I'm Doug, I've given, I've showed you that I believe in you. I've given you those contracts. You know, some of it, you, you have my arm behind my back, but fine. Okay, that's just the way that's negotiation. Not what you deserve is what you negotiate. And you can bitch and complain all you want that this guy's getting too much money or that guy's getting too much money. That doesn't do you any damn good. The bottom line is, is that those guys, because they got that, have to be able to at least play to that number, whatever that number may be figuratively on the ice. And I think all of those guys, if you ask them, would honestly say, no, I didn't do that last year. There were flashes. Like there were times where I watched Brent Burns and went, wow, he's, he's back, man. He is in control. He's, and then later on in the year, and this might've been due to fatigue and ice time and just kind of how weird the schedule was. He dropped off Mark Edward Vlasic. Let's be honest. He needs to pick up his game, right? Yeah. I and he'll be the first would, one to say it too. Yeah, exactly. That's what the great thing about Mark. And then Eric Carlson, if he can stay healthy, knock on wood and he gets those feet moving again, like you saw some flashes, you're going to be okay, but they've got to play to that number because yeah. that number is very important as far as showing everybody and telling everybody, those are the, those are the three guys back there that are going to run our team for better or for worse. You know? So I look at it that way. Well, and you know, thank heavens for Mario Ferraro, you know, oh. having that sophomore year see? and then, Picking up uh, Kinezhov, uh, you know, that he was able to stick with the team pretty much all year. But yeah, Eric Carlson, I think he had what, like three points the first 25 games. It was just kind of an afterthought. afterthought. He misses four games. And then you saw there for about 10 or 12 days stretch. It was like, oh, this is the guy we've been waiting for. Yeah. Yeah. And then, like you said, and then there he goes. You know, it's, it's, it's consistency over intensity for me. And any team, really, when you look at it, I don't need flashes. I'll take them every once in a while, but good teams have that consistency, right? This is this is where we are, and this is where we're going to stay. And every once in a while, we go like this. Every once in a while, we go like that. But overall, I want that consistency over intensity. Yeah. Well, I mean, we're going into year three of this eight-year deal. I mean, if and, yeah, you know, and he's on pace. Last year was, you know, pace wise, if you put that over an 82 game season, he's yeah. only get, he's only making 37 points. That's yeah. that's but you know what? Points, you know, points come and go. And especially when you're when you're a defenseman, like who knows the situation getting um as far as being able to to score, not score, power play, penalty kill, what when you're on the ice, who you're on the ice against, all those things matter. Um but you just need them. And you need Eric to just limit the 
the major league giveaways and mistakes, right? I need them to be, again, consistent. I need them to, again, be reliable, be trustworthy. When I put them out there, I know what they're going to do. Nine times out of 10, 99 times out of 100, I know what they're going to do. And so that's, again, that's all you can ask for as a coach. Points come and go, power plays surge, and then they fall. All kinds of things happen. But I need them to be consistent that I trust when I put them out there, they're going to play to the level, the effort, the execution that I'm looking for within my our scheme or our system. Yeah. Well, they they all seem super amped for camp to begin. You know, a lot of yeah. names, a lot of people coming in. Uh, one, of course, one of my favorite names who uh, got a call, uh, Biaka Batuka. I just want to. Ah. I just want well to done. hear, I want to hear Randy say that name over and over and over. Again. <laughs> Here's the other thing though. You know, I, I hate this saying back to normal, um, but for the NHL players, the last two years have been quite abstract and far away from their routine. NHL players, oh, athletes period. They're creatures of habit. You know, I'm getting up at eight o'clock. I get to the rink by nine. I'm going to have my coffee. I'm going to stretch. I'm going to do this. And then I'm going to go out on the ice. I'm going to work on this. And then on and on and on it goes. And game days is the same thing. Oh, it's Groundhog Day over and over and over again. The last two seasons have been completely opposite of that. You don't know what the hell you're doing. Yeah. And there's no training through the summer. And then in September, I really amp it up. And I'm back on the ice in August. And I'm doing all this stuff. And in October, I'm going to training camp, you know. And then we're got season starting. Or I'm, September, I'm going to training camp. October, the season starting, and this is how we're doing it. And there's fans in the stands, and I don't care what anybody says that makes a big freaking difference. Oh yeah, you know. So um, it's more. It's going to be back to normal for these guys. So I I expect you know we're talking about Carlson and Burns and Vlasic, those veteran guys. I think you'll see. I, I I'm pretty positive you're going to see that they will be much better and more back to their previous form, even though they're getting older, we're all getting older, but um, they'll be, they'll be more relaxed in their game. If that makes any sense. No, it does. And you're right. Father time undefeated so far. Yeah. Yeah. No kidding. <clears throat> I mean, Chris Chelios might have something to say about that, but uh... oh my God. <laughs> hey, that's just obscene. That guy, my goodness <laughs> me. Wow. Uh I mean, let me ask you this as a coach. Um, what do you think that this schedule is one of the weirdest things I've I, like, I thought last I year it, was yeah. odd and I'm going, okay, as a coach drew, like, what do you think about seeing one opponent in your division in the first 27 games? Just one. I hate it. I hate it. I, I don't like it at all. Um, I want to, I want to go through, I want to go through my division. Um, I want to see everybody at least one time in my first month. You know, I hope to anyway, but it's there. They hit Canada. They, they play Canadian teams. They're out East. They come back. Like they play. There's a stop in Calgary and Winnipeg in there somewhere in that first yep. month. Uh, it's beautiful that time of year, by the way, in, uh, in Calgary, and Winnipeg. I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> no, it's October. So it'll be okay. It should be okay. Um, and it, yeah, it's, you know, you, you, you know what I, I stopped kind of, way back in the day when I was still coaching, I stopped looking at the schedule going, what are they thinking here? I, I know that nobody in New York owns an, owns a map or a, yeah. an Atlas to see, you know, where things are happening in California or out West, but it's, it's such a huge endeavor to take on the, the, uh, the schedule. So, but you never, you never know because of, building dates you never know because of of your own building dates and their building dates and it goes on and on so the best you can do is adapt to it be be resilient and i think that's one thing that maybe we've seen athletes really either struggle with or embrace the great teams seem to be really resilient and the other ones weren't like i i would say that about the san jose sharks last year considering their season but especially considering how it started like they were in Arizona. Group. Yeah, they went through a stretch where you thought, well, maybe they're they're getting it. And they looked good, and then by the end, I I didn't think they had much juice left at the end. But um, 
you, you got to be resilient and they, they're not going to have to worry about that this year. This will be compared to the last two years, especially last year. The fact they don't see their divisional opponents until later on, they'll be fine with that. It's yeah. kind of back to normal anyway. I, yeah, well, I just thought it was such an odd scheduling quirk. And then the other thing that kind of uh, left me a little bit perplexed is, yeah, last year was something that we certainly don't want to ever go through again. But yeah. the thing that did come out of it that seemed to be uh, favorable to the, the players, coaches, a lot of people involved was the idea of miniseries. Where oh, go I love up, those. Yeah, go up to Vancouver. Play, play on a Tuesday and a Thursday in Vancouver, you know, have a day that gives you a little more time to practice, lowers the carbon footprint with all the travel, you get to stay in the same hotel room for a couple of days, you know, you have something there and then you can move on to Calgary, play a couple there. I mean, there was ways you would hope to do that. And I'm going to 82 goddamn games, one fucking mini series. Are you kidding me with this? It's funny too, because the players when asked about it, the poll at the end of the year, they were so in favor of more miniseries. They liked going in and staying in for three or four days and playing two games. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, but again, that's about my pay grade, pal. And um, I, I don't oh. question the overlords. I just, I've, I've, I've gotten to the point now, and I've been really, this is not bullshit. I've been really trying over the last, you know, 20 months. And this has been for me. Okay. Remember who you're talking to, <laughs> to just, worry about things that I can control. Yeah. You know, I've been working at it. My temper is not as <sighs> go off anytime when I get frustrated or mad. I've been trying to just, just, I'm going to say Zen like, not really Zen like because I, you know, I get to go to kickboxing and hit things and that's good. Um, that kind of helps me, but um, just to kind of let things go that I don't have a hand in and that I can't change. So I think with, when you're looking at players, that's how they should look at this. You look at it and go, well, what, you know, like you say, weren't we doing the, weren't we doing the uh, mini series things? No, we're not. All right. Okay. No problem. Let's just go play fans in the building, which will be great. And let's just, let's just get back to, to whatever the normal is. Yeah. I mean, and that's definitely some, some advice that I need to adhere to. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> you it's, know? it's hard though, isn't it? It's hard oh, though. <laughs> well, when I see stuff like this, the, what, one of my favorite parts here is march 10th at la march 12th hosting la yeah. march march 17th at la <laughs> like, what? i don't know if they know I think there's a there's another there's another hockey team in that area that you could probably go play but you, you know what for years though for years though oh don't remember. get me started don't okay. get me all right, started all right all right i, I know where you're going it's it's the back. Yeah, it's exactly that. How do you not play in LA one night, Anaheim the next? How, how do you not figure that out? Or my other one that has been like a pet peeve of mine forever. Why is it that almost any time Anaheim or LA plays in San Jose, it's yeah. on a Saturday, but when yeah. the Sharks play down there, it's on a fucking Tuesday. Tuesday. <laughs> like I would love to go down and catch a game down there, but I yeah. need to be able to do it on the weekend. Exactly. And they, yeah. never there <laughs> drives me crazy uh but what what's your take then on the pacific division and we can start in the basement which i'm assuming is anaheim or what we're calling mm. buffalo west wow okay <laughs> yeah i would say that i would say that the, again the california teams are gonna are gonna have to battle each other to get up there but here's here's the thing when i look at i think i think that la with dan o it improved um I think because of the fact that he's able to win so many draws and defensively, he's really good. Make it with Kopitar and Dan O out there. You might have to be chasing the puck all night and they grab, who else did they grab? Oh God. Fenceman. Can't remember. Anyway, uh, I, yeah. I think they're a little bit better. And the way that Todd had that team playing they they've got some work ethic. Now they've got a template set. And I, I like the way that that, that team plays, they play hard. I still think they've got um, goaltender issues now, but um that's stuff you keep you keep trying to solve. Um, as I said, I like the Sharks. I like what they've done. Uh, I think there's, I think Bob. I th first of all, I think Bob's a hell of a coach. I think Bob last year did a great job because he was. There was at times he didn't have much on the shelf, and he did he did a great job. And I like the fact that he calls out his guys. I think I like the fact that he holds guys to, uh, to to a, to a standard. 
And it's hard to do when you're a coach, to, you know. So, and you see the seat, way the season was going while it started. I think Bob did a did a bang up job, as, as good as I think you can expect with the situation that he was was put upon him. Were you, were um, you trying to think of Alex Edler? Edler, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, so, I think Anaheim's there. I think that uh, L.A., San Jose, um, I think you're they're going to have to scrap like hell to get in there. But I think San Jose, I, I do like I said, I, I like the way the San Jose, um, what they did. I, I like the way that Doug added a couple of guys that are going to really help as I said, distribute the minutes. Um, Vancouver improved. I think Vancouver improved. When you look at their D, when they got uh, Tucker Poolman, um, they have got um, Oliver Ekman Larson. Yeah. I think made a nice move with Garland. If you look at their D and you look at their goaltending, that's a that's a that's not a bad group. I've always not been a, a Demco Demco fan. Oh yeah, and and uh, Yarrow Halak is a solid backup. They're better in goal with Braden Holpe leaving. No offense to Braden, but yeah. They just are. Um, so I like Vancouver, I think, but Vancouver still got a little bit to learn with their younger guys, be able to play the way they want to play consistently throughout, you know, 82 games. I think Edmonton helped themselves vastly when they, I don't think, I, I don't like the Ethan Bear trade at all. I loved Ethan Bear. I thought Ethan was going to be a, a, a is going, I, I still do. I still think he's going to be a very, very good defenseman uh, in his career. I think that's going to be like a Jeff Petrie deal where they traded mm-hmm. Jeff Petrie and, and look at where Petrie is now. Um, getting Hyman and Fogel has helped them um, add more to, to help Connor and, and Leon. Um, losing Larson's a hit. Yeah. Um, but, and also no Clefbaum. Clefbaum's going to be up. I mean, that shoulder just isn't coming back. But they're still a better team, but they've got a 39, 40-year-old goalie in Mike Smith who is, you know, Mike's competitive. You know, Mike's the kind of guy that beats his kid into Madden, in Madden football, like consistently. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought you were like, just leaving it with beats his kids. Beats his kids? No, no. <laughs> said, What's the old line from Bob Euchre in Major League? This guy threw at his son and uh, <laughs> threw at his own kid in a father-son game. Yeah, you know, that's that's kind of how competitive Mike is. Um, and they've got question marks with Koskinen. I think the big question mark is in goal. So, but I think they're going to be there. Vegas still is the is Vegas. Vegas still is a very good team. And, they are, and but they, boy, man, the, the way everything went down with Flurry, man, that's, you know, to, to find out on Twitter, that's got to suck. <laughs> so but the situation there was Kelly McCrimmon, general manager, couldn't get a hold. Well, he, he didn't make any, he didn't call him. He talked to him a bunch of times. He said he talked to him like 15 days before that trade happened about Chicago. Yeah. And he didn't, he didn't call Marc-Andre Fleury until the deal was done. And by the time the deal was done, the guys who do their job and do it well, the insiders, you know, they get done and then bang, 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 Mark Andre Fleur is gone. You know, they, they all got their connections somewhere. Oh, yeah. So that was how that happened. I, I think he's going to retire. I don't I, think he's going to Chicago. Well, see, I, <laughs> we were uh, seeing, I was like, okay, how's, how can he get them back? You know, <laughs> like, who can he sign with? Like, yeah. we were going, Wait a minute. Is there a week in Colorado can get him? Is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, I w- so, so I think you know. There's. Did I miss anybody? Did I miss Calgary. Calgary. Well, yeah. So what was it? Losing your captain yeah. and bringing in Duncan Keith. What is that? What it was? <laughs> yeah. No, losing your captain, bringing in Nikita Nikita Zadorov. Oh yeah. Keith went to Edmonton. So yeah. So. Oh, you did forget a team. Ooh. Seattle. <laughs> oh, Seattle Kraken! I got Groove no hour, just, buddy. Groove hour. I just know they'll. I just know they'll be a better record than I had when, when I, with George Kingston and Bob Murdoch in our first year at the San Jose Sharks. So, young. Um, I like some of their guys that they picked. I thought he was interesting that he went really young, and was going to develop. And cap space was more important than than bringing those guys um, like Vegas did. And the interesting thing about Seattle this year is that. Unlike Vegas, the general managers didn't outsmart themselves this time. The, 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 the general managers didn't say, hey, I'll trade you this guy and this guy if you don't take that guy. So I'm going to trade you a first rounder and, and Jonathan Marshall scored 30 friggin' goals so you don't touch 
and whoever was available, like Aaron Eckblad or, or, you know, Barkoff or whatever, whoever the deal was. But you end up getting Riley and Marcia so for, so I don't pick that one guy. And they got so many draft picks. Like George McPhee and Kelly did a great job on forming that team. And they're still reaping in the benefits now. But they're, they're cap spaces. Oh, they're yeah. over the last time I looked. I used to sit uh, like what one point five over or something like that. Yeah, like, yeah, one one five, one yeah. eight, somewhere in that yeah. neighborhood. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll we'll see how they get back. And of course, there's all the rumors swirling that uh, okay, what is it going to take to get Ike to Vegas? And I'm like, get the out of here. <laughs> every week, every week it's been every week in Canada. I don't know how it's been down there, but every week in Canada, there's something on on Sportsnet or TSN on the webpage. That, Important week for Jack Eichel. Important <laughs> week for Jack Eichel. Yeah, okay. When? What's happening? Yeah, make it happen, Captain. Yeah. Well, what do you think about Marlo and Thornton? Are are either of those guys in the NHL next season? Um, boy, that's a good question. All right. Yes, but not immediately. Later on, I think Joe would probably go to Davos and play. That's you know, that was there. They take they take the kids and then go see his his. his uh, his wife's um to buy his um, mom and dad and be over there joe will play until joe can't play anymore yeah i heard that patty wants to keep playing and but not realizes it, it may not be in san jose anymore and probably won't be yeah. um so i think patty might get a late call i think joe might be in europe but i think you know, I, that's a, that's a hard one for me because I absolutely love those two men. They are, they are top of the heat, man, for me, especially like they just, they are without a doubt legends when it comes to San Jose Sharks. They're legends of people. They are two of my favorite in the world. So I'm a little biased. I, maybe I'm saying, I, I, I hope they do. That's for sure. I hope I get to see them again, but I think they'll keep playing one way or the other. Yeah, well, you know how they uh, they have that annual kind of captain's ice before camp starts. Yeah. Would not surprise me in the least to see the guys out there, you know, throwing yeah. it around. Not at all. Yeah. So, well, I heard Joe's house. I heard Joe's house was up for sale. So I nine point nine point five million. Hey, good to be king, isn't it? Hey. And you know what? The uh, last time you know we try to keep tabs on, on things. Last time we looked, which I think was about a week ago, it said sale pending. Oh, really? Davos, so, here I come. Right. Um, yeah. You know what? The great thing, the great thing about those two, I don't care if they don't have a championship ring, like those two did everything they could. Like that you want to talk about, if you want to look back without regret and, and smiling and think, yeah, I know I did it my way. They did it their way. Fantastic. And it's just, and you couldn't ask, like I said, you couldn't ask for two better people, just great human beings. Yeah. It's it. the only thing you look at it. You just say it's unfortunate that it ended the way that it did with, you know, with, with no fans in the stands for, you know, yeah. the, all that, yeah. the, you know, that's the hard for Patty part. for Patty, especially. Um, oh, could you imagine what the tank would but, have been like when, with, oh, when he came back with the record? That's, you know, that's where I give Vegas credit. They were able to get those fans in those fans recognize what Patty had done, but can you imagine the tank that night? Oh. Can you imagine the tank that night? I mean, it the, was, the tank, the way that it was when he came back his first game as a Maple Leaf. Yeah. You know, was so like I a, remember that. I remember watching that. Yeah, yeah. It was like eight, nine minute ovation. Yeah. But so that would have been, that was, I agree. That party's out, Rob, but it's still, I tell you what, it still doesn't take away from the, what an incredible, incredible career he's had. No, it was amazing. Well, thank you, of course, again, as always, for joining. Um, Anytime, bud. Good but to see you again. We we we're gonna have to. I'll bug Brody, but we're gonna have to have you on. You know, the we we gotta see you on pre and post again. You know, there's a lot of. I know you're I not. You on the, I know you're not on the social, and I wish I wasn't either. But it's a you know <laughs> occupational hazard. But I will tell you, man. Every time you know you were. Oh, oh Drew's gonna be on tonight. Gotta watch yeah. it. Gotta watch. I don't know. You know what? I, I like I said. I I don't I don't question it because I just feel fortunate the fans just been so good to me but like i said i i loved coming back and broadcasting again it for this team as you know as you if you read anything you, like my time in edmonton was not exactly 
award-winning. <laughs> uh, but I had a guy, it's funny, I'll tell you a quick story. The guy, I'm back working on the radio, I'm working on radio um, with a sports show back like my, I used to have. And there's a guy who works there. There's two, there's two guys who work there, as a matter of fact, who are huge Edmonton Oilers fans. And one of them came up to me, sales guy, and said, can I talk to you? And I said, sure. And he goes, um, why did you keep, when you were broadcasting for the Oilers, keep talking about the San Jose Sharks? And I looked at him, and, and, and again, like I'm trying to, you know, just trying to be Zen-like more. I'm trying to be, I looked at him and I went, you know, um, I've had dumb questions given to me before, but that might be the dumbest one I've ever heard. <laughs> I said, I talked about the San Jose Sharks when they played the Edmonton Oilers. I didn't talk about the San Jose Sharks when the Edmonton Oilers were playing the Toronto Maple Leafs. I said, the fact that you as an Edmonton Oilers fan and all Edmonton Oilers fans kind of projected the San Jose Sharks and me together, I understand because I was with him so long. And then as he was walking away and I said, by the way, I would rather talk about the San Jose Sharks any day of the week than the Edmonton Oilers. <laughs> and now he won't talk to me again in the office. He doesn't even say hi to me in the office anymore. <laughs> That's I don't understand. I don't know why. <laughs> and the other guy says we. When he's talking about the Oilers, he says we. So as soon as you say we, I'm out. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah not but, we. It's uh, them. Yeah. Where, it? Where's your stall in the dressing room, pal? Exactly. <laughs> How many goals did you get last year? Yeah. <laughs> That's good seeing you, bud. Thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it.